Hello, my name is Cliff Sarantine, and today on The Naturalist, we're going to be talking about the high bush cranberry, also known as the viburnum trilobum. And later on, we're also going to take a look at the low bush cranberry. Though these plants have similar names and even similar tasting berries, they actually are not really related at all. They're not even in the same genus. But both are easy to identify, if not so easy to find. The viburnum is one of a genus of plants that grows into typically a small to medium sized shrub. Actually the viburnum tarlobin can grow up to 15 feet or about 5 meters tall. And it's relatively easy to identify like most of the viburnum plants such as wild raisins and witch hobble, more commonly known as hobble bush. The plant produces blossoms in umbels which turn into these clusters of berries that hang down typically, and often they're larger than this, but I've forged a bit from this plant already. Bright red berries that strongly resemble cranberries. They're not true cranberries, and that's an interesting thing about the viburnum trilobum. It is not a true cranberry, yet its taste is very much like the true cranberry. There is a European highbush cranberry, and its berries are not very good at all. It's fairly easy to tell the leaves of the viburnum trilobum because they're shaped roughly like maple leaves. They have three points in three distinctive lobes, there, there, and there, hence the name viburnum trilobum. The berries as they mature look very much like the berries of the true cranberry except the true cranberry of course grows right on the ground in bogs. The viburnum trilobum will grow in a variety of soils but in the wild it prefers to grow in damp but well drained soils. Here it's right in front of a brook before a hill where the water flows downhill and this water is typically damp though the water is always flowing slowly downward into the brook. And this is ideal for a viburnum tri trilobum. Almost perfectly ideal anyway, it does like full sun, but it can tolerate partial shade and it gets shaded from the trees behind me and the trees on the other side there. The berries of the viburnum trilobum go from green phasing into red phasing and they look very much like the berries of the true low bush cranberry, except they're a bit smaller, uh, quite a bit actually. The low bush cranberries that I find in bogs are probably two to three times the diameter of these, however the taste it's pleasant and tart and refreshing and very similar. There is a seed in the middle and well I don't care to eat that seed but you might like it. To cook with these you use these very much like any other cranberries. The bark can run from gray to brown. In this case it's gray and a bit silvery and fairly smooth. The leaves as we progress from summer to autumn go from green to tinging into a deep dark kind of flat red. It's not glossy and bright like the leaves of maple trees and other more colorful trees. It just tinges more and more red. This is a relatively easy shrub to identify and a good one for new foragers who are just beginning to learn how to identify wild plants. And one last thing to recall is that sometimes its leaves can be toothed or smooth or something in between. Now let's go take a look at the wild low bush cranberry. But to do so, we're going to have to go just a wee bit deeper into the woods. Some place remote, some place out of the way, some place we're not likely to see too many people. So while we're getting there, a little background on the lowbush cranberry. It's not even related to the highbush cranberry, except in the sense they're both plants. And as you can see in this shot, you're going to find it in boggy areas. And unless you live someplace that gives you access to boggy parks, or there are perhaps some self-pick lowbush cranberry farms, you're going to have to plan to get there via wet ground. And I find in such places the best mode of travel is by canoe. And I love going to my lowbush cranberry bogs. They are beautiful and reveal a whole different ecosystem. One filled with waterfowl and tiny unusual birds of prey and the curious activities of semi-aquatic animals. 
So with the canoe pulled up onto the bank and out of the wind, it's now only a few dozen meters walk to my cranberry bog. There is debate among scientists as to whether the cranberry bog should be divided into several species, but the commonly accepted name for this plant is Vaccinum oxycoxos. It is a tiny evergreen with almost inconspicuous oval leaves growing only 3 to 10 millimeters long. It only grows a few centimeters tall and grows singly or may form a thick ground cover. Here I'm using the tip of my knife which has a 5.5 inch blade to illustrate just how tiny this plant is. It loves to grow in open areas of bogs on or around sphagnum moss and has a high tolerance for the acidic soils that are common to bogs. The leaves are leathery and have an alternating growth pattern. They are a deep glossy green on top, but pale to silvery beneath. And since they are evergreens, this persists year round. A distinctive trait of the lowbush cranberry is that at the end of its twigs, it has a growth bud that looks something like a little rose in pre-bloom. The fruit, as noted earlier, are typically two to three times the size or diameter of the fruit of the highbush cranberry. And while they can grow in pairs or triplets, I find that among the wild lowbush cranberries, they almost always grow singly. The beautiful lowbush cranberry blossoms have been described as looking like shooting stars. They have four pink petals, darker toward the center, that are distinctly curved back. And they typically face downward, presenting very long stamens and a longer pistil up the middle. Usually, the stamens are reddish and the pistil is yellow. One should always tread lightly when foraging in bogs as they are sensitive wetland ecosystems. But foraging near such areas can also offer another advantage. They're a great place to find marvelous mushrooms and I found several dozen of these on my way out. I think that should about prepare you for foraging for low and high bush cranberries. Perhaps I'll see you sometime out there.